In this video, I'm going to be building the 135th Panzer IV F1 Vor Panzer by Border Models. This is the first video in a multi part series where I take a more detailed look at the building, painting, and weathering process. Anyway, let's get stuck in and look at what's inside the box. The instructions come printed over 20 pages and they look fairly easy to follow. One point however I did notice is that some parts were mislabeled or omitted completely, so keep your eye out for these. Five marking schemes are provided in the kit and the profiles are nicely printed. The kit tracks are nicely detailed and come as link and length parts. Unfortunately I won't be using these as I got myself some frules for this build. The fenders are really nicely moulded with tread plate on both the underside and the upper side. The tools are nicely moulded, they come with or without clasps, but in this kit you don't get any photo etched clasps for the tools. Border have used plenty of slide moulding on this kit, which is great for gun barrels, the sides of fenders and other tricky details to mould. The moulding of the rivets and weld seams are really well done in this kit. They're nicely refined and they look in scale. The turret has mostly been moulded in one piece, apart from some space for some inserts that makes changing the variant possible. The hull tub has to be the most impressive piece of moulding on this kit. Border have moulded a complicated structure and done it well. My boxing came with a bonus turned aluminium barrel and resin figure. I'll be using the barrel, but I don't know that I'll be using the figure. A piece of twisted copper is supplied for the tow cable. Unfortunately, my piece had a kink in it, so I won't be using it. There are four sheets of photo etch provided. Two of these make up the Schurzen, which I won't be using. The decals are nicely printed and in register. What more can you ask for? The build started with adding small parts to the whole superstructure. These were glued on with VMS styrene cement fast. Thin glues are great because you can just put the part down and drop the glue on and let capillary reaction do all the work. This is great for tiny parts or running the glue into a seam line. For parts with a larger surface area, I recommend a slower setting cement. The lifting hooks were supplied in two parts. The actual hook was very delicate, so I left the sprue tab on and cut this off once the part had dried. This was then sanded smooth. The jack block came with some nicely moulded, subtle wood grain. This will definitely make painting it easier when I come to it. The bogey wheels were really nice, but unfortunately I had a glue spill and ruined the detail on them. I considered remoulding some replacements, but I'm not very skilled in this, so I asked a friend for help. You can see the results in a mo. The suspension arms came supplied in only three parts, which is nice compared to the Dragon ones. They articulate a little bit, but if you want your suspension to look more dynamic, you may have to make some modifications. The two halves of the road wheels were glued into place. The wheels were left loose to make painting easier.
Multiple parts and the exhaust were glued onto the backplate. Overall, this area is nicely detailed. Border models have used a really soft plastic for this kit, so don't get too overzealous with your sanding or trimming. You might wear away some detail. I had to remove some excess plastic to get the tension arm covers to fit. Also, the way the arm slots in is fairly vague, so make sure to double check you've got it right before you commit to glue. After a day or two, I had a parcel from Sarah Staples from Staples & Vine. In it was some 3D printed bogey wheels. Ideal. Sarah has a YouTube channel of her own, so please check it out. Just head to youtube.com forward slash Staples & Vine. There's lots of scratch building goodness and even a guide on how to mould your own parts. So go check it out. Thanks Sarah. The 3D printed resin details are really nice. The resin is brittle though, so you need to take care when cleaning up the parts. I tested the resin bogey wheels against my frill model tracks. To get them to fit nicely, I had to remove a few miller plastic on the inside. I glued some steel rod to the bogey wheels. For this I used VMS Flexi 5K CA. These were then just pushed into place so I could remove them for painting. The few remaining parts of the running gear were then assembled. The sprue gates and tabs were carefully removed from the fenders. As I won't be using the shirts in, I removed the arms with a CMK razor saw. As the kit tools didn't come with PE clamps, I had to dress them up a bit. I drilled out the centre of the clasp handles with a 0.3 drill bit. This process is really delicate, so you want to make sure not to break anything. Once the process had been started with the drill bit, I used a fresh 10A scalpel blade to hollow out the inside further. Once again, this is a delicate procedure, so be very careful. I'm removing tiny bits of plastic at a time, being careful not to cut into the detail I want to keep. This does leave us with some rough edges that would be almost impossible to sand. To fix these edges, I used some VMS fast setting styrene cement. This was brushed over the details and the plastic was left to level on its own. Be careful to use only small amounts of glue. In the end you want handles, not blobs. The tools with their vastly improved clasps were then glued into place.
The way the fender's attached was quite innovative, if not a bit tricky. You might have to position these several times until you get them at the right angle. Once I was happy with the positioning of the fenders, I ran in some VMS styrene cement fast. Here you can see the warping on the upper hull. It's not too bad and some careful gluing should set it right. You could use clamps for this, but I just used the pressure from my fingers. The engine deck was pushed into place and then I made sure to use fast setting styrene cement. This glue doesn't take long to bond, so it's ideal for situations like this. I made sure that the parts lined up correctly before committing to glue. This makes sure that everything is in place and where it should be. The whole plate that sits above the transmission needed some putty on the edges. For this I used the white AK modelling putty. This was thinned with water before I brushed it carefully into place. Any excess putty was then removed with a dampened cotton bud. For the photo etch parts of the kit, I used VMS Flexi 5K CA for PE. This was decanted onto a non-porous surface and the glue was applied with a toothpick. This glue has a nice working time, it gives you just the right amount of time to adjust your parts before the glue sets. When working with tiny photo etch parts like this, I usually pick them up with a fresh scalpel blade. This allows me to just drop them into place and let the glue do the rest of the work. For larger parts or parts that require more complex gluing, I usually use a pair of tweezers. There were some holes left on the hull for the shirts and mounts. These were filled with milliput. Once I'd let the milliput go off for 30 minutes, I re-sculpted in the weld bead details and cleaned them up. This was then left for a few hours to harden completely. The benefits of using milliput for jobs like this are the long working time and the fact you can clean up any excess with water. If you're enjoying this video and haven't done so already, why not hit that subscribe button and let me know that you want more content like this in the future. With the majority of the work on the hull done, it was time to move on to the turret. The inserts for the turret sides were glued into place. Be extra careful here, because the part callouts are wrong. The Commander's Cupola was a multi-part assembly, and you had the option to have the vision slits posed open or closed. I chose closed for this build. The top plate was then glued into place. I left the hatches unglued so I could choose what to do with them later. With some careful gluing, you can keep the elevation of the main weapon movable. 
The fit here is very tight, so be careful not to damage any parts. The extra armour on the mantlet was glued with VMS Styrene Cement Slow, so I had some extra work in time whilst placing it. The metal barrel, its housing and the recoil system went together really nicely. The fit of the gun sub-assembly into the mantlet, however, was a little bit challenging. I think I bent the front turret plate with the force I had to use to get the parts to fit. Some interior detail is provided for the breech block and the back of the gun, but as you won't see it, I'm not going to use it. The base of the turret was then carefully glued into place. The front turret plate needed a bit of tweaking as the glue dried, as the part was very slightly bent. To add some more life to the vehicle, I made some tarps from VMS Paper Shaper and 80 gram printer paper. The printer paper was fully soaked with VMS Paper Shaper. I then wiped away any excess on the side of my pot. The paper was carefully folded into a shape I was happy with and carefully placed in the turret bin. Using some tweezers and a fine brush, some folds were sculpted into the paper. If the paper shaper started to dry, I just reactivated it with some more. When the tarp's dry, you can use VMS Clean Slate Remover to remove the tarp. This also removes any unwanted paper shaper residue from the model. The tarp was then sprayed with a mix of VMS, structuring acrylic binders and airbrush thinners 2.0. This final step helps to smooth the grain of the paper and keep the tarps rigid. For my first go at making tarps out of paper, I think they came out really well. I'll be using Frill Model Tracks for the first time ever with this build. I'm using the ATL-03 Panzer III-4 tracks. They were fairly easy to work with and gave a nice sag to the tracks and a nice weight to the model. Firstly, I re-drilled the holes for the track pins with a 0.5 drill bit. Any casting marks and flash was then removed with a sanding stick and a 10A scalpel blade. I made up the track segments in lengths of 5 to 6. The brass wire supplied with the tracks was then carefully pushed into place. Once I'd made sure it had gone in all the way, I trimmed off the end.
Once the track pins were trimmed, I used some VMS 5K Flexi CA Extra Fin to seal them in place. You've got to be careful to get the superglue only where you need it. Excess superglue stops burnishing fluid from working, so take care. Once the glue was dry, I sanded off the excess parts of the track pins. Each short segment was then pinned together as before. Once the whole track segment was complete, I pinned this in place. This pin was left extra long so I could find it and unglued so I could remove it later. To finish the build, I tacked everything in place with PVA glue. I used PVA so that I could remove parts easily when it came round to painting them. And there we have it, the Border Models 135th Panzer IV aus F1 Vorpanzer. Please check back in a few weeks for part 2 where I tackle the painting. I also want to say a big thanks to you for watching and for my patrons for supporting me. If you're interested in becoming a patron and supporting my work, click the card in the corner. I also want to give another huge thanks to Sarah from Staples and Vine for coming to the rescue with this build. I'll say it again, go check out her channel. I really like the look of the Vorpanzer. The extra armour makes it look like a right brawler. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, if you liked the video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I'm James from LPJ Models. Thank you for watching.